Welcome to Black Angus Reviews. Today we're reviewing The Boys Season 2, Episode 5, called We Gotta Go Now. And uh, wow, this was jam packed full of uh, interesting details and plot points and that I'm gonna get into. It's kind of my raw take reaction. Uh, so if you're new here, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, this will be full of spoilers of key points throughout this episode. Uh, first off, we have uh, the female. She's been distraught since Stormfront has uh, killed her brother and whatnot. And Frenchie's been trying to, you know, find a way to heal her soul. And I think ultimately heal his as well. He finds some sort of connection with her. And uh, so far it hasn't been really received back from her. And uh, in this one we see her t do a brutal takedown. So people were like, who the hell is this? I was kind of thrown off because... Uh, the group that was kind of the origin of abuse and whatnot for her and her brother uh, were from Vietnam. And turns out it was a hit job. She's working for Albanian, so I guess she's taking out the rivals in this town. And uh, his girlfriend's been taking uh, a cut of her hits, setting these up. So that was kind of a sad surprise. Um, hopefully we'll see more of her. I do like the girlfriend. However minor her character she is, she's pretty hot, so it's nice, nice to see that. Um... It's funny, too, they're filming this uh, movie in the show called Dawn of Seven with the actual uh, heroes. And so we start with Queen Maeve, and she has this awkward scene where she's uh, pulling someone out from rubble and stuff. She's like, oh, well, you know, we all can't be like you and this and that. You know, you're out about who you are and this and that. And um, There's about to be a kiss, but then it's like, all right, cut, next scene. And we see that Maeve, since she's kind of been exposed, thanks to Homelander, as being uh, bisexual, having a girlfriend in the background, uh, in private, uh, he's been tormenting her with this. He's really uh, become more of a dick than he already is as a bad guy, and uh, really throwing his weight around. And uh, his arrogance is kind of catching up to him. It's funny because right after this sequence of him taunting her and whatnot, you see some footage from some African village where uh, some terrace is screwing up the place. It looks like he has some sort of elemental power. And Homelander just like, boom, pops in, nukes the guy with laser vision. You think, okay, whatever. And then you see the full clip, and he killed a kid like behind the dude. He didn't, you know, watch his uh, surroundings and whatnot, his bearings. And so now he's got like some, you know, bad PR building. He's down like 10 points uh, for his stock or his, you know, appeal or whatever in the public. And uh, it's just kind of funny, his reaction is like, oh, ugh, crap. And, and then, like, uh, one of the senators or, or representatives from uh, from D.C. is, you know, rallying people at Vought and, you know, uh, starting to show that the, the government's about to, like, get in on this and start correct, or at least trying to legislate to correct the superheroes and their overreach of power since they've been allowed to be part of the military now. And you have this crazy ass sequence where everyone just starts, you know, protesting Homelander. Uh, he's kind of dug himself into a deeper grave, addressing these people in public. And he just goes laser vision, just, just wipes out the whole field of people. And I'm like, this is scary. I didn't expect it to turn this way. It's all in his head. It's a dream. He's just, you know, wanting to do this. Um, and yeah, Homelander is becoming really unhinged. Um, and he's, he's having trouble suppressing that. I think it's a good, good uh, angle for the character, you know. I don't know, it makes me think about, like, probably what it's like as a Superman writer, or the people that start Superman versus where he's gone now with all these other better superheroes since they overstacked his character. Um, I don't know, there's a lot of meta things there. That was interesting. Um, but yeah, going back to Maeve, uh, she's not in this much, but they have a couple other people from you know hr or bot the creatives um trying to i guess build her image now that she's out and they got her girlfriend with her like all right so this is what we're going to do this is our pitch this is like the hashtags we're going to do it's testing little audiences all right now girlfriend you're going to dress like this and she's like those are boy clothes like i'm a dude and she they're like yeah we think that uh this is the best way to go. Like, bi is so whatever, but lesbian's like definitive. And you need to look this way because people are less accepting of, you know, two attractive females as lesbians versus an Ellen uh, Porsche dynamic of very clear, like, masculine versus feminine role. 
And I don't know, I found that to be kind of meta about the state of comics. And, uh, you know, they'll like uh, either push these gay characters just because that is their whole character is the gay one or meddling with an established character like Bobby Drake uh, in X-Men where it's like, don't you know you're gay and that's supposed to be his character now? Um, it, I don't know, it felt meta about like this being the end all be all of a person or a character in a film or something. That, that's kind of a problem, especially if you watch, if you see Twitter mobs about X topic um, and entertainment. So I, I don't know, I found that meta and I appreciated that. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh yeah, and Butcher, Billy Butcher. Ever since this ordeal with uh, Becca, where she's so like, well, you know, you don't want my son. Uh, he's a soup like Homer is. And you're always gonna hate him. He's always going to be a freak to you. And she's kind of, you know, picked her, her side in this argument and left Butcher to go off on his own. Unfortunately, which was his whole drive in life for years. Uh, not even knowing she was alive for a while. <clears throat> and he's just going off the deep end now. But luckily, we got um, Huey there to, to check on him, try to, you know, follow up and stuff. And uh, thanks to Mother's Milk, um, they're able to find where he went, which he went to his uh, aunt, to Aunt Judy, I think's her name. And you see the dog. You finally see the dog, uh, Terror. I've read the first two comics, and it's like, it's not a big deal, but it's like, oh, they're supposed to have a, pit, uh, a bulldog. So that's kind of cool. Uh, there's a funny little thing where uh, Huey grabs his pig, and the aunt kind of clarifies, like, yeah, that's the dog's fuck pig. Uh, <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> That was hilarious. Um, it's really good stuff. Dawn of Seven, they got another scene where it's like all three girls in the Seven Stormfront and Maeve and Starlight. There we go. She's one of the main ones. Uh, <laughs> they have her. They do like this. I, I think they did this to mock the Avengers in Endgame where for some reason they just perfectly line all these women to like battle in this one sequence which is really cringe because it's clearly like girl power messaging. It's really ham fisted. And I like, I like it to calm that shit out too. And this, so that was good. Um, another weird thing, uh, the deep, he gets married in a collective. The previous episode or the episode before it started out really weird where you're getting these girls talking about like relationships and stuff and communication. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Who are these people? And then you realize, like, oh, they're trying to find the best match to sell to the public for the deep to recuperate his character, uh, given all the kind of Me Too sexual assault stuff going on in his uh, past. And uh, you don't see much when you see that with uh, a funny cameo. They had Katie Couric in this. So they got Chris Hansen episode two ago, or maybe the first episode, and now uh, Katie Couric. So that was hilarious. A uh, little, little nugget there if you're, if you're interested. Um, but yeah, you don't really see them besides uh, this really cringe commercial to pitch the collective, the trips to the collective in the show, and which I think is supposed to be like mocking Scientology, I'm not certain, and uh, Queen Maeve finds them, and I think she's getting her ducks in a row to try to usurp Homelander. Um, we'll see how that goes. Let me see what else, other notes. Um, yeah, so when Butcher goes home... Uh, a couple of the boys, Mother's Milk and Huey, come to try to bring them back and get them on track again. Well, also, Black Noir has followed them. So you finally, uh, you know, have the follow-through with Black Noir having uh, that girl at HR track his face. Um, and so he's about to leave. He's like, crap, Black Noir is here. And so they're trying to figure out a plan to take him out or, or challenge him. And, uh, man, the dude could take a hit. They read these like homemade bombs. It doesn't really do shit to them, but torches that whole house. Um, and we get this cool detail. Um, I don't know if it's like in his person or just in his armor, but Black Noir has a camera on him. And since there's an interaction with Giancarlo's character, like the leader of Vought and Huey, through Black Noir on the camera. Um, and not Huey, Billy, <laughs> Butcher. There we go. Uh, Butcher kind of threatens, like, hey, I got pictures of your, uh, superhero rape kid, um, his wife's, you know, bastard, and he threatens, like, hey, if you kill me, this gets leaked, and ruins Homelander's reputation, 
clearly that's enough, um, just the threat. And so, uh, luckily Butcher and company avoid death. I didn't know if any of them were going to get out of this or how it was going to work. Um, so I was like, Ooh, that's a good moment. I was like, God, you can't end now. You probably got another season or two where the show's over. Um, <laughs> uh, oh yeah. The last couple things are about Stormfront. Um, so Stormfront and Starlight are starting to have a beef. You know, at first it's felt like Starlight was trying to earn Stormfront's favor and figure her out to be on her side or whatever. And then of course we learned that she was Liberty, who is this like, you know, white nationalist character um, and has murdered someone's brother back in the past. And they keep kind of shuffling around the country with different um, identities or whatever. And no one's really caught on. Uh, I'm really interested to see where Stormfront's character goes because um, there's a couple things. And this will be the end. Um, Bobby Drake, I don't know his name, but the guy who plays Iceman in X-Men makes a cameo in this as uh, somehow related to her character. I don't know if it's blood or um, if she's just tied to him some way. Clearly, there's a history that we'll learn about. But uh, I thought it was just kind of interesting. You got an X-Man a cameo in a different, a very, I would say, anti-superhero show with the boys. That's kind of the whole antithesis of the boys as a comic creation from Enos. He, he hates superheroes, generally speaking. Um, it's more interesting to see where this goes with that character and what's going on uh, between them. It's not like he was kind of ordered by her to let, let this kid die in surgery or something. I'm not certain. Um, but yeah, there's that. And then there's been this... Uh, Kind of budding romance. Um, I know they're the bad guys, but you're kind of like, oh, they kind of work together. There's like a sick kind of fondness for these two characters, Homelander and Stormfront. I, I definitely felt it where Homelander's like, you know, he is trying to do the PR stuff the way he's always done it, and it's not working. And he keeps, you know, kicking himself, but he's too proud to to get this girl's help. And uh, when he first gets help. There's just kind of some, you know, subtle physical cues between, uh, from Homelander, at least, of, like, interest. And there's been some, I would say, mild jesting or something from her. And, uh, yeah, we get, you know, uh, fruition from that. Uh, there's, like, this uh, crazy superhero sex scene at the end where they're, like, beating each other up. Uh, Stormfront can actually take the laser beams of Homefront. And she, she, I guess, gets off on the pain of it. It seems she has some sort of regenerative power. So this might tie into her whole history and why she's still a youthful character despite having uh, murdered someone as Liberty back in the 60s or 70s. Um, yeah, and uh, just knowing enough about like behind the scenes, how they film certain scenes and stuff, I bet it was really entertaining to film that superhero scene as funny as it is on screen to see two like, kind of Superman characters uh, bump uglies i uh i don't envy that dude having to probably sit in a harness naked <laughs> to to make it look like he's like flying having sex um yes yeah, this episode was like jam-packed full of uh goodies from uh, all our characters we're interested in um yeah so that's all i got for you it's my review uh reaction to uh the boys episode five season two let me know what you thought in the comments what was your favorite part what are you anticipating uh, who do you think Maeve will get in the fold? Do you think she'll kind of end up coming around to uh, the boys and their crew in this fight against the superheroes? Uh, or in, and do you think it'll work for the Deep? Because they actually, you know, they killed a well a couple episodes ago to uh, in their fight. So, yeah, um, good stuff. Thank you for joining. I'll talk to you all later.